Year 230 was a pivotal year in Megora's history. For the second time in their existence, the Megoran Rams had united under one man, Hindalon Moral Throya. A new arch Ram had risen to power, and he maintained it by giving his kin monumental goals to work towards. The first goal he had set before them was to carve a tunnel beneath the Megaran peaks to connect the provinces. He made many promises to different realms of who would own land on either side of the tunnel, which kept even his greatest rivals under his thumb. But the construction of a tunnel was a project that would be completed no matter how challenging it became. And so Hindalon needed a broader goal to keep Megora focused on and prevent them from turning against themselves again. What luck that Hindalon had exactly such a goal in mind. He pointed to the far north, a land he had once visited, and claimed that there were people in these frigid wastes, that should they unite, would erase both Megora and Hidaria. They are a strong people, determined beyond measure, ruthless beyond reconciliation, and as cold as the very ice they draw their names from. But united, we can thaw at any frost before it bites back at us, bringing with it an unending winter. The Rams respected him and found it in their best interest to remain united so long as he was there to lead them. And lead them he did. He rallied six of the mightiest Rams at the time and marched his army north to face a foe. He was ill-prepared to battle. Archram Hindalon wasted no time after the completion of the tunnel. He called forth six of his mightiest rams and marched north, allowing them to join with him along the warpath. The more his army grew, the more confident he became with the subjugation of the north. But he would leave nothing to chance. He sent scouts north ahead of his army to meet with informants he had planted there years ago, hoping to demystify this foe he had never fought. He waited with a restless army that was not used to long campaigns at the edge of Megaran territory for his scouts to return. And one by one, they returned. Their reports were mixed. On one hand, they mentioned how the nomadic nature of the ashen-haired folk of the North made it difficult to pin them down. Conventional warfare that revolved around lands, holds and cities is not as applicable to people that did not themselves settle. However, they did not return empty-handed. There were three main fathers of Frost, or leaders of groups of these nomadic ice wanderers that had caught wind of Hindalon's advances. Each of them set about calling for temporary alliances, but all three were still staunch rivals. Most importantly, the location of one of these three fathers of Frost had been uncovered. Northwest, near an area of jagged lands was where he gathered his warriors, near a ravine enveloped in frozen ridges. And so, Hindalon gave the order to march, opting to crush these Fathers of Frost one by one before they could realise the mistake of their arrogance. The route he took drew much criticism from his Council of Rams. Hindalon deliberately forsook a direct route, which his Rams greatly preferred. But he did this for a reason. He wished to surround his enemy from all sides, which meant a fraction of his force would have to approach from the ridge that overlooked their encampment. It was then that he split his force in two, giving control of half of it to his first man and brother, Mignelon. And so the stage was set for the Battle of Nolreg Ridge. Hindalon's host of around 1050 men arrived near his planned approach point, but he arrived too early and in unfavourable weather. His brother's force was nowhere to be seen, and a dense fog lingered around his enemy's encampment. The arch round was pressed to make a decision, and he chose to wait until the fog diminished, then strike before his ambush would be foiled. Half a day he waited, but as the sun began to sink, he realised that this fog was here to stay. He gathered his rams and they all counselled him to strike, and so he ordered his men up the ridge. As they climbed, they could see to their left another higher ridge, and to their right was the descent down to the northerners' encampment. They remained unseen as they set up their archers into position, ready to bring down a rain of death upon these ashen-haired folk, but not before Hindalon would speak to their leader. Father of Frost, hear me. I am Arch-Ralm Hindalon, bane of the Empire, binder of the realm's breaker of mountains. But you know of me, for I have sent many a call for allegiance and the request for a union between our peoples. One you have ignored. 
I have come to make no such calls today, and I offer no such requests. I come with one demand. Bow down to me now, and you shall be treated with the honor your folk deserve. Trust me, and you will know what it is like to bring ice into an endless pit of flames. The Father of Frost turned his attention up and laughed. It is as was written in the stars. It is as the elders have prophesied. You have come indeed far. But you are a fool to think I, or indeed any of our people, would bow down to a warm-bellied coward that moves in darkness and shadow. You are an even greater fool to think that a father of frost can simply order his sons into such mockery. No! Blind servitude is for your southern men, not for wanderers of ice. With that, Hindalon grimaced and gave the order to open fire. The first volley of arrows screamed down upon them, and out of the near 500 ashen-haired men that had scrambled into positions, at least 50 had fallen. Their only saving grace being the same fog that had obscured Hindalon's march up the ridge. A second volley hailed down upon them, but the Father of Frost did not call for a retreat, which unsettled Hindalon, who thought that they would surely break and flee with losses under such an ambush. Then a battle cry echoed throughout the ridge, and a second force of northerners appeared from the high ground that was now behind Hindalan's army. A force of brutish men wielding axes of various shapes descended savagely upon his forces that were left scrambling to defend themselves from this new attacker. Hindalan quickly barked orders to reorganize his forces, lucky as he was that the realms refused to part with their realmsmen. Each realm insisted on not separating their ranged and melee fighters as Hindalon had done, and their obstinance gave him a fighting chance. Perhaps until his brother's forces would arrive to save him. Though little did he know that his brother would not come at all that day. Mignolon had done as Hindalon had ordered, and took the more direct approach that would lead him to encircle their target. It was Hindalon's hope that the ambush would cause the Father of Frost to flee into Mignolon's waiting arms. But instead, on his way, while crossing a frozen lake, Mignolon was beset with the third father of Frost, who had set up an ambush of his own, sending boulders down from nearby hills to break the thin ice of the lake and revert Mignolon's course. Many good men died in that ambush, Mignolon included. That second force would break and return to Migora and wait for news of their arch realm's fate. Not only had these northern folk set up a trap for Hindalon, they had succeeded in leading him to believe that they were blind to his movements. When in truth, his own informants had never switched allegiances and remained loyal to their northern kin. The fighting at Nolreg Ridge was fierce still. Axes and swords clashed, shields lay broken and shattered around them, and smaller axes were flung in their direction. Hindalon had turned his archers to the more pressing threat of the forces bearing down upon him. But then, two things happened in tandem that both spelled certain doom. The Father of Frost on lower ground had been prepared. He had set up a net along the ridge to help his fighters climb. And so the Migorans would soon be surrounded on a ridge with a force that was set up for ranged harassment. To make matters worse, they heard screeching that deafened them. And from further along the ridge, they saw them. Sisters of Hail, as they were called a force of ashen-haired women, screeching, wailing, with daggers in their hands, approaching at a rate that was suicidal. Hindalon quickly ordered his rams to swap flanks, knowing that spearmen would perhaps dissuade the advance of these Sisters of Hail. They barely managed to position themselves in time, but to little effect, as these Sisters of Hail cared very little for self-preservation. The Arch Realm searched the battle for anything that he could hold onto against such reckless warfare, and it was then that one of his own fold came to him. The way back is clear, my realm. Call for a retreat and let your kin make a stand to show these northerners that we follow you out of freedom, not blind servitude. It broke him to do so, but he would not dishonor his own men's desire to see him return to avenge them another day. Grimly, he gave the order, and to his surprise, his elite fighters were joined by those of Arveya. And so it was that 50 men blocked the way against over 500, and there they were buried. But born from this battle and the loss of his brother was Hindalon's undying resolve to bind the north to Megora, no matter the cost. 
he would spend a lifetime and every resource available to him to that errand. And today, all that remains of his struggles a quarter millennia ago are three Mioran settlements and loose affiliation to High King Alon's crown, 